Hi there. Now for the first part of this question, it says show that the equation 3 sine squared x plus 7 sine x equals cos squared x minus 4. That it can be written in the form 4 sine squared x plus 7 sine x plus 3 equals 0 for two marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. OK, welcome back then, if you had a go. So for this first part then, A, we've got to show that 3 sine squared x plus 7 sine x equaling cos squared x minus 4 can be written in this format. Now what I notice is that what we've got to show doesn't have any cosine functions in. And we've got cos squared x here. So to get around this problem, we should be familiar with this identity, and that is the sine squared of any angle plus cos squared of the same angle is always identical to 1. And from this, if we were to subtract sine squared theta from both sides, we'd therefore have that cos squared theta must be identical to 1 minus sine squared theta. And so this is something that you should be familiar with, okay, the basic Pythagorean identities as we often call them. And what I'm going to do then is replace the cos squared x here with what would be 1 minus sine squared x. So therefore what we have is, copying out the left hand side here again, we've got 3 sine squared x plus 7 sine x is equal to, and in place of cos squared x, we're just going to write 1 minus sine squared x. And then we've got minus 4. OK? Now, if I add sine squared x to both sides, we're going to have 3 sine squared x plus another sine squared x. So that's going to be 4 sine squared x. And then if we follow it with the plus 7 sine x, and then... 1 minus 4 is minus 3, but if I add 3 to both sides, we're just going to get plus 3 there equals 0. And that's what we had to show. OK, we come on to part B now. And in part B, it says, hence solve for x greater than or equal to 0, but less than 360 degrees, the equation 3 sine squared x plus 7 sine x equals cos squared x minus 4. And giving your answers to one decimal place where appropriate for five marks. So again, if you'd like to have a go at this, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. OK, let's see how you got on if you had a go. Well, we've got a quadratic equation here in the right format. It's a quadratic equation in sine x. So should be able to factorise it and we can factorize it, it will have a couple of brackets here, a couple of factors, and it will equal 0. And in the first bracket, let's say we put 4 sine x, and in the second bracket, let's just have sine x here. So we've got 4 sine squared x, the first term. And then for the 3, two numbers that multiply together to give the 3, well, that's going to be a 3 and a 1, and I can see that if I put plus 3 here, plus 1 here, 3 ones are 3. And then we're going to get 4 sine x plus 3 sine x, which is going to give us the 7 sine x. So in the usual way, it would mean that each of these factors must equal 0. So I'll just write that in, that 4 sine x plus 3, that factor would equal 0. Or the other factor, sine x plus 1, well that could equal 0. And that means that if we take this equation here, Subtract 3 from both sides, sine, 4 sine x would equal minus 3, then divide by 4, and you end up with sine x equaling minus 3 quarters. Or, in this case, if we subtract 1 from both sides, we've got sine x equals minus 1. So, with that, we should be able to solve each of these equations. Let's take this one first of all, that is when sine x equals minus 3 quarters. And to get x, we just need to inverse sine both sides. So x is going to be equal to 
the inverse sine then of minus three quarters. Now, to do something like this, you could draw a graph of the sine x, but I'm going to use the quadrant method. And I'm assuming you're familiar with the quadrant method. If not, do check it out with my tutorials on my website, okay? This is naught degrees. This would be 90 degrees, 180, 273, 60. And where is sine x negative? Well, it's always negative in the third and fourth quadrants. So we draw a line equally inclined to the horizontal line, like that. So we mark in those two angles as being the same. And we want angles between naught and 360 degrees. So possible solutions would be this one round here, starting from here, going all the way round to the first blue line. That is a possible value for x. And then starting again from the zero, we could turn from here all the way round to the second blue line, all the way round to there. And that too is a possible solution for x. So when you use your calculator, make sure it's in degrees mode. And when you inverse sine negative three quarters, you'll find you get a negative angle. It will turn out to be minus 48.59 and so on degrees. Now that being a negative angle refers to this turn here in a clockwise sense. So that would mean that this angle in here marked in blue is going to be 48 degrees basically in magnitude. I'll just drop off the decimals there, okay, just so I can fit it in. And that means that this little blue bit in here, that angle would be 48 degrees. So we want the red X, so that's going to be 180 degrees, half a turn, plus 48.59 degrees. So when we do that one, what you end up with is 228.59 and so on degrees. Now as for the green x, that's going to be a full turn of 360 degrees minus 48.59 and so on degrees. And if you work that one out, you'll get 311.40 and so on degrees. Now we're not interested in this first angle. It's not in the range. We just used it to help us work out these two. So there's two solutions there then. We'll round them up to one decimal place later on. But we'll now take the other value of sine x and that was when sine x, we'll just put it in here, when sine x equals minus one. And so to get x again, x will equal the inverse sine of minus one. And this is a very well-known one. And for this, when I get zeros or ones or negative ones, I don't tend to use the quadrant method, just work off a graph here, okay? But it would still work off the quadrant method if you wanted to try it. Okay, so I've got my axes, x and y, and I would sketch the graph of y equals sine x, which starts from the origin, rises to one at 90 degrees, 0 at 180 degrees, minus 1 at 270, and at 360 degrees it's 0. So at this point here, at 270 degrees, the value down here is negative 1. And that's what we're looking for. In the range 0 degrees to 360 degrees, it's going to be 270 degrees. So therefore, x equals 270 degrees. So I've got my three solutions now. What I'm going to do is just summarize by just putting them in order of size. So x equals 228.6 degrees, if I do that to one decimal place. Okay, we'll put that as one dp. And then we've got the exact value of 270 degrees. And then we can round this one up to one decimal place, and that's 311 0.4 degrees and I'll say that's to 1 dp for short. Okay?